public lecture can at the end of the uh, today workshop. So most of us are uh, already here. Uh, and, uh, and probably in a sense I will be repeating some concept or some uh, point that has been discussed in one of the presentations, which means that in a sense, uh, as uh, Chris was saying uh, at the end of the workshop, uh, uh, there is a large variety of ideas and topics that have been uh, uh, that are present in the in the in, in the in the community, which is uh, uh, doing this uh, type of research. So my my talk will be in a sense. Uh, uh, a talk describing the concept that I believe are, are behind the, the econophysics, some results that have been uh, um, obtained during this year, and some perspective. And I use the, the word hybrid science because uh, econophysics by construction, at least the name, is, uh, is, is let's say, uh, merging, uh, merging the concept of uh, economics with the concept of physics. I will try to show you that this is not so strange also, and that indeed we are in a period of hybrid sciences for, for several reasons. So, due to the fact that this is the econophysics networks, and, uh, and it is uh, an econophysics uh, workshop, and there is also the econophysics colloquium, let's, let's go to the world. So the world econophysics, uh, <coughs> In a sense, today is uh, used uh, in several um, occasions. It is also in, uh, in, in a dictionary of economics, in the new program dictionary of economics, which was uh, recalling I mean, some, some words that uh, I, I mean, we wrote, we means uh, myself, Gene Stanley, in our old book. I'm typically not present in my book. I mean, people that know me uh, know that it is a very exceptional. This. But I'm doing in this case uh, because it is an old book, and because uh, I mean uh, uh, it is a book that uh, try to in a sense uh, uh, use the word, and I think the word is also used thanks also to 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 this kind of promotion. And I wanted also yeah. to, to cite uh, the work from uh, Richard Kutner that was one of the first translator, and here there is the Polish. Yes. This book inspired many, many students and PhD uh -huh. students to begin in kind of physics in Poland. Okay, so, and uh, I mean, this is just uh, web of science, uh, a search of the topic uh, econophysics done, I think, to the, uh, yesterday. And uh, and you see that there is a, a certain number, steady number, approximately 70 papers per year, and a growing number of citations during this period. You see, the first year is 1998, so uh, and uh, uh, and this makes sense because the, the the public use of the word econophysics started in 19, uh, 1996, although the activity started before. And uh, I mean, this is the paper that uh, was where well, the the word uh, was published for the first time. I mean, there are, if you look at Wikipedia, you find that I mean, this uh, was uh, this this word was uh, 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 let's say uh, expressed or was just uh, publicly used uh, for the first time by G. Stalin in Kolkata, which is probably true. But uh, I mean, uh, at that time, uh, that conference was not a conference about econophysics. It, it was just a conference about uh, statistical physics, and in fact. Uh, Gene was presenting a paper on covering to uh, topics starting from DNA to physiology to econophysics. The, the, but uh, uh, this was the first public uh, um, event in which uh, uh, first public uh, uh, occasion where the, the word was used. And uh, starting from that, uh, there were it, started to be used uh, more and more, and, uh, uh, but uh, the activity started a bit earlier, and this is one of the first paper, I think, which was uh, a paper I, I wrote in 1991, but this was the period when uh, this type of, of interest of physicists <laughs> toward the stock market started. 
Before there was also a, a, a paper, but not in the a paper in Scientific America from Per Buck, if I remember correctly, and there was also a, a kind of paper from another scholar with, a, with, with interest in the stock market, which was Wendian Lee at that time, and uh, and uh, but these were rather exceptional at that time, very very uh, peculiar approaches. There was another from. Uh, from uh, the group of uh, Hideki Takayasu, and indeed it was a kind of uh, easy model just to describe the, uh, uh, the it was a threshold model inspired by by by, by easy model and and uh, easy model and uh, uh, and, uh, and and this was another um, let's say pioneering approach in this direction. And uh, another important paper, I think, was the one uh, written together by Jean-Philippe Bouchot and Louis Ornette, which were the first to try to approach the problem of uh, derivative pricing. This was in 1994. So, uh, <coughs> so the period then, starting from the 90s, there is this interest towards topics which, is, which are, uh, uh, in which, uh, let's say, concept on physics are used in uh, in the area of finance, primarily finance and economics. Uh, and then in uh, 1997, I think there was the first true uh, econophysics workshop. It was in Budapest and it was organized by, by Imre Tsabai, Janusz Kertes and Imre Kondor. I mean, there were some people there, I think Marcel was uh, there and, uh, and, and also other, you will see. And immediately after, there was essentially a few months later, there was another meeting, uh, which was in Rome, rather that time a rather informal meeting, and it was uh, organized uh, at uh, uh, La Sapienza in Rome, and there were a group of people were there again, uh, myself and also Marcel, uh, and Zhang at that time, Ravakont, uh, and uh, <coughs> Solin Solomon, uh, Enrico Scalas. Uh, and uh, Nicolas van der Waal was at that time. <coughs> and uh, I'm citing this because uh, you see here there was a, a workshop on econophysics and then there was an informal meeting on statistical finance. Why? Because there was a discussion concerning the world, econophysics and statistical finance. There were people <coughs> preferring econophysics and other people preferring statistical finance. And there were also fight for that. You know, there was a, a, a serious fight. Yeah? And uh, this was on, uh, one of the reasons why when I organized, I mean, this is, uh, I would call that, when I organized uh, the Palermo workshop, it was the third, uh, I just uh, called the, the workshop, uh, workshop on economics and statistical finance, just to avoid uh, problems from that. And uh, again, uh, at the, in Palermo there was Jean, there were Takayasso, Neil Johnson, Matteo Marsili, Per Bac, Angelo Volpiano at that time, uh, and Janusz Kerte, Imre Kondor, and others. And uh, this, uh, this uh, could have been the first uh, proceedings on economics. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, uh, when, um, after the uh, workshop in Budapest, uh, we were asked, uh, the, the people that attended the workshop, we were asked for, for a contribution. Uh, and we, some of us wrote a <coughs> paper, including Marcel and myself, but this, uh, pr this proceedings were never published, which is a pity. Uh, and uh, um, up to, let's say, a few years ago, and I think perhaps uh, they are still there. I mean, this, uh, this paper were on the web. So there, there was a work, there was just a virtual uh, version of the web. But I'm, I'm recalling this just to, to show some of the um, people that were involved at that time, at that time, Ramakont, myself, uh, and Gilles Zumbach, uh, and <coughs> Kirill Iniski, that, uh, you know, this is, you see the title, Gauge Physics of Finance, some topics that then after a few minutes, uh, uh, also uh, investigated by others, Jean, uh, Amaral, uh, and uh, Weisbock, uh, uh, Matteo Marsili, Solin Solomon, and so on, Sergio Galan. And uh, so this was the uh, starting of, uh, on a larger scale of the econophysics. 
and uh, and uh, I think we should, at least from my perspective, we should recognize that uh, it's something hybrid. So it, of course, uh, it's uh, <coughs> it, it is uh, time to use a concept of physics in another field, which is finance or and economics. And then, I mean, we are using a tradition concept uh, and tools, which are a bit, uh, I mean, that in some cases can be uh, used and, uh, and can find uh, an, an interesting application, but in other cases, perhaps they are not uh, really uh, uh, directly, uh, cannot be direct, cannot be directly used in, 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 in the other field, because, for example, they have some roots that that uh, cannot directly apply to another field, like the conservation law. Today there have been uh, questions concerning, for example, the uh, Planck constant. So in physics you have a Planck constant when you use uh, the concept of uh, uh, quantum physics just to try to describe also financial system, then, then you put some constraint that perhaps makes sense or perhaps not. It is, I mean, the, the, uh, I mean, the analogy could be uh, a, a positive and, and fruitful analy analogy, but, but but perhaps also that I mean, uh, indeed things are re really different, and then uh, this type of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, use of concept of one uh, one discipline and another are just uh, are not able to produce uh, fruitful results. So this is a. Uh, in a sense, uh, it could be a limitation, but it could be also a channel to transfer concept from one side to another and, and obtaining uh, uh, fruitful uh, results. So, um, what, what about the history? Indeed, history is showing that uh, this type of, uh, of uh, links between uh, physics and, uh, and uh, um, economics has a, has a long history. Wallace was using a concept of uh, uh, just uh, mechanical equilibrium and, and, uh, and the general uh, equilibrium theory in, in economics came from uh, the framework of the mechanical e equilibrium. So from this point of view, there has been a tradition in this direction and, uh, uh, and Bernoulli was, uh, was the first to introduce the concept of utility function. So in a sense, uh, again, there was a, uh, a scholar which was, uh, uh, which was interested in mathematics and in physics, and it was, uh, but uh, at the same time he had also deep interest uh, in, uh, in economics. And, uh, and another example is Jan, Jan Timbergen. He, he was a... Uh, uh, I think he was a student of uh, Ehrenfest, or, or, or at least a collaborator of Ehrenfest. This is a famous photo where there is uh, Paul Ehrenfest and Rico Fermi and John Timberley mm -hmm. and others. And, uh, and he, he won the uh, Nobel Prize, the first Nobel Prize in economics, by uh, proposing the so-called gravi gravity model. The gravity model is, is, a, uh, is a model where the, the, the law of gravity of, of the, 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 let's say the Newtonian law is used as, a, as a, a framework to model interaction in the international trade. And nowadays it's a, it's a, it's a highly respected theory in economics and, uh, and, and, and this uh, uh, was the result of, a, of an analogy transferred from physics to economics. So <coughs> these are big historical results. So let, let's go a little bit more in detail concerning the approach of economics, at least from my perspective. So uh, typically when we started to do this type of things, what, what we did was uh, just to, um, to imagine that uh, uh, we were using uh, the methodology of physics in, in, in the study of economic and financial system, which means that typically the idea was to uh, have a continuous feedback between empirical observation and development of models. I mean, of course, also in economics, you have uh, 
an approach towards data. But there is an historical, um, in a sense, uh, locking effect. There is a locking effect in, in, in at least in, in, in mainstream economics, which is primarily related to the fact that uh, uh, theoretical economics have been uh, formulated starting from the 30 of the last century in terms of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a kind of mathematical approach. So you need to, to have a, a models which are, I mean, it is said, micro-founded, so in which you have some assumption, which are the basic assumption of the economic theory. And if uh, this type of, of, uh, of condition are not met, then uh, the community of economists do not recognize the, the, the approach. Even if the approach could be, let's say, um, in a sense, uh, pro, uh, producing interesting results. So, I mean, from this point of view, what we did, uh, in, perhaps in a naive way at the beginning, was just to not to care about, uh, let's say, the micro foundation of just the approaches that we did, but just to look at data and try to develop models, even if they were naive or just simple or just toy models. The other aspect was in a sense related, it was related to the fact that uh, due to the fact that the models might be of any type or even based on some heuristic simple rules, then they were implicitly coherent with the idea of bounded rationality and heterogeneity. This is another, as another aspect of uh, economic, uh, financial, and social system. <coughs> Typically, when you have a social system, the system is almost <coughs> always heterogeneous. So it, this is a, an intrinsic characteristic. Uh, uh, is this relevant or not? And what was the <coughs> solution, or what it is the, so the, the, the classic solution from the side of economics? The classic solution from the side of, of economics is the fact that uh, uh, in economics, you build up what is called the representative agent. The representative agent subsumes the complexity of the system by including everything in the representative agent. So it's a kind of mean field theory. So you 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 have uh, you have many many uh, many different behavior, and you you might have heterogeneity, but this heterogeneity is uh, is uh, then uh, synthesized in the detail of a single representative agent. We know from physics that uh, often, I mean, this, in <coughs> some cases this work, and this is, a, and this is a beautiful, elegant simplification, but in other cases, this could uh, um, work only partially, or in, in some cases could be completely wrong. So in a sense, uh, that there might be classes of problems where heterogeneity cannot be uh, tackled in a way that you have just a representative agent. And this, this has opened up the interest towards the, uh, the approach of the agent-based model that has been discussed also today during the workshop. The other aspect concerned data. I mean, the activity started in the 90s. In the 90s, there was uh, the... Uh, uh, that was the starting of the effect of the uh, IT revolution. So a lot of activities started to be uh, um, organized and, uh, and, uh, and assisted by, by computers, which means that uh, uh, large data sets started to be available. So uh, this means that, that uh, something changed, and uh, something <coughs> changed uh, uh, we will see the, also with respect to the way uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the problems are monitored. But before to go to this point, uh, let's uh, have a, a kind of uh, uh, a focus on the fact that, uh, I mean, uh, I was citing uh, Wallace uh, and, uh, and Timberman uh, and uh, the, 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 the modeling of the, uh, the gravity model. But uh, on, in, in these cases, physics was contributing in terms of uh, deterministic laws. But uh, starting from the 50s, I mean, indeed, uh, uh, statistical physics had uh, a lot of success, especially in terms of the critical phenomenon, in terms of the uh, theory of the dynamical system. 
which means that uh, there were a new uh, contribution in terms of ideas that could be used to model system which are heterogeneous and which are and which are uh, uh, <coughs> and where the agents can present uh, bounded rationality. Uh, starting from the 90s, there was also the uh, 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 there was also the explosion of the interest in into network theory, and, and this was another type of contribution that uh, 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 stimulated the interest of, of, of statistical physicists towards um, systems that uh, are of economic or social origin. So, so there were. Uh, uh, there were uh, theories and results based on statistical physics. There were uh, <coughs> there was uh, the, uh, the the uh, the uh, there was an approach not to be uh, in, in a sense uh, uh, limited from the absence of micro foundation, and there were data. Data started to be available large amount of data starting from the 90s but the, let's say the explosion was uh, after 2006-2007 so this is a nature uh, cover of 2008 when, uh, when uh, the, um, um, the um, uh, LHC um, experiment start to, to to, uh, to be uh, in production and the petabyte of data were expected. Nowadays, petabyte of data are produced in several uh, disciplines. And, uh, and in fact, uh, this uh, implied that uh, discipline like uh, but several disciplines have changed their, their, um, uh, their status with respect to the production of data. There were, there were disciplines like biology or social sciences which were originally producing a low rate of data and also today and sometimes depending on the type of, of experiments or, or medical science this type of uh, 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 discipline were producing a very limited uh, amount of data nowadays they, they are producing huge amount of data or business uh, activity are producing huge amount of data which means that uh, we, have, uh, we have seen uh, uh, during the uh, late 90s uh, and uh, the beginning of this century, we have seen a shift in, uh, in type of production of data of the different, uh, 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 different uh, disciplines. Physics is no more probably today the, uh, the uh, discipline which, are, which is producing more experimental data. <coughs> And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and this is very important, why? Because in physics, in physics typically, the, experiment, the experiments are highly controlled experiments. <coughs> so, I mean, you are at, at, at the LHC, and then you have a proton and antiproton, which are, which are um, um, moving in the, in the ring, and, and, and then you have an experiment which is a, a Tailor it on something, and you have, and, and you know what you are looking for, and you try to uh, uh, limit and avoid the, the the uncertainty around the experiment, and and so this is the way physics is working. But uh, uh, the the way we we collect data in biology or in medical science and in social science is it's significantly different. Because look at, for example, biology, at what are these uh, uh, microarray techniques or these uh, parallel techniques of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, record recording uh, gene expression or, or protein uh, expression in a, in a given cell. Typically what you do is just to track uh, the expression of, uh, of uh, essentially probes of the entire genome which means that you are performing an experiment, typically, which is, uh, um, which, is, which is producing data on a global scale, and you are doing something uh, which is uh, more of, of observational than just performing a specific uh, experiment on a specific topic. So this is changing the nature we are 
performing the experiment and we are analyzing the experiment. And, uh, and, and, uh, and this uh, makes uh, some of the discipline more similar. In the past, uh, uh, it was uh, almost uh, unbelievable for an uh, economist just to perform uh, 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 analysis on, on data which, which were coming, which were not carefully selected and organized. And nowadays they are uh, doing that. They are doing that on, on data that are produced primarily or from, uh, let's say, business uh, uh, activity and institution or by, by, um, by <coughs> some, uh, um, some large, large scale uh, 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 surveys. <coughs> Okay, so then uh, I mean, we I, I believe that we are in a in a in a period of uh, of uh, hybrid uh, hybrid uh, disciplines because we are mixing. Uh, we are just uh, we are in the in, in the in the process of uh, approaching uh, the modeling of complex system in a way which uh, which is different from what we did 20 years ago, and this means that. Uh, some of the techniques uh, uh, or some of the needs concern, uh, concern the way we analyze data and specifically the way we analyze a large amount of data. And uh, this means that uh, we need to devote uh, uh, attention and uh, efforts in, into the data mining approach, something that uh, was not always uh, 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 done uh, let's say, by the entire uh, community of scientists in the past, when the experiments were, were more localized and, and highly controlled. Because there was a, I mean, uh, because the, the, in this way, the, the problem of what, what it is irrelevant uh, with respect to the scientific question was, uh, 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 was solved in the planning of the experiment. Okay. Uh, I like to uh, when I, when I, when I uh, give this type of talks, which are a bit, uh, in a sense, showing the uh, uh, just discussing the cultural the cultural background. I like to cite uh, Ettore Majorana. Ettore Majorana was an Italian physicist of the group of uh, Enrico Fermi, and uh, and so he was uh, uh, one of the young protagonists of the of the development of the uh, of, of the uh, quantum mechanics but uh, 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 at that time it was one of the few realizing that uh, when you have uh, when you have uh, when, when you need to uh, take into account the probabilistic needs in the description of quantum uh, uh, system this is something that uh, uh, shows that uh, in general, in several areas of, of science, uh, you need the, the probabilistic, uh, the probabilistic uh, description. And this probabilistic description could be uh, 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 so needed that, uh, that uh, sometimes it uh, affects the behavior also of a very simple uh, system, like just a single atom. And, uh, um, so I can skip this. Uh, <coughs> so let's then. Uh, I mean, then the, the 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 conceptual background was this. There was a there was a, a growth, uh, let's say a, a very uh, rapid growth of uh, of the data of, of, of the amount of data available. This changed the way in which we were able to monitor. Uh, a complex system. Uh, there were theoretical results concerning critical phenomena and concerning the theory of uh, 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 dynamical system. And then there was the opportunity to analyze a, a complex system uh, uh, of uh, economic and social nature with the, with the methodology of physics. And this opened the uh, uh, the possibility of, uh, of, uh, sta of studying some economic problems, some problems in finance, uh, it, it uh, emerged that uh, the concept of networks was uh, 
uh, uh, very useful in, in, in modeling the several system, there was a need of developing some uh, clever data mining approach for, uh, for uh, selecting and interpreting information of where that was present in this complex system. And uh, the limitation of the, uh, or, or uh, the fact that uh, many complex systems were uh, so intrinsically heterogeneous motivated the uh, development of the approach of the agile based models. So if we consider this area, I mean, this is just a, a kind of personal selection of the potential area of, of interest for econophysics, we see that for, in, in finance there have been uh, a lot of works uh, focused on the investigation of the stylized fact. The stylized fact uh, is a term uh, to express uh, statistical regularity that we see in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, system. And uh, from the perspective of the econophysics, this uh, motivated uh, a, a, a modeling in terms of fractal or multifractal description. There was a contribution concerning derivative pricing, uh, portfolio optimization. And there was uh, the use uh, of the random matrix theory, so something that was uh, originally uh, introduced in, uh, uh, in nuclear physics uh, for uh, the uh, extraction, for the problem of the extraction of the information which is present uh, in a correlation matrix of, uh, of uh, 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 financial assets traded in a, given, in a given market. There was uh, then uh, of there have been interest in the modeling of what is called market microstructure, including high frequency trading, problem of optimal execution, uh, and uh, the modeling of the trading decision of individual investors, the, uh, the modeling of rare events, and recently <coughs> also uh, uh, an interest uh, towards cryptocurrencies. In economics, uh, the, the, there was a lot of activity concerning the wealth distribution, the heterogeneity that you observe uh, in a system, uh, firm growth, firm organization, international trade, and also aspect of, uh, of uh, wealth inequality. And uh, from the side, in the side of the agent-based model, <coughs> there, there have been several agent-based model study, and one of the most famous one is uh, certainly the minority gain. I don't know if I will have time, but uh, if I uh, uh, the minority game, I think it's a very special uh, agent-based model because it has been an agent-based model that uh, uh, has been uh, not only numerically investigated but also, but also theoretically described with very sophisticated tools of uh, of, uh, of uh, st uh, statistical physics, and by doing that, it has been. Uh, it has been uh, um, uh, really understood in a sense. And uh, because uh, one of the limits of the agent-based model is that uh, I mean, we gain uh, flexibility and we gain the potential of modeling, uh, of modeling uh, heterogeneous system. And this is at the cost of the fact that uh, we, not, not always it is possible to, to have a control of the, of, 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 of the model that, uh, that it is. Uh, Investigated and recently there have been some efforts in the direction of building up budget-based model in microeconomics. In networks, <coughs> there have been uh, two line of uh, uh, thinking. The uh, first line of thinking have been uh, the development of what I call the proximity by using this term of computer science, which means a similarity of the similarity-based networks. So networks which are built starting from the similarity of the behavior of something, for example, the profile of the return over time. I mean, this is, a, this is a, an area that has produced uh, uh, some, uh, uh, a large activity of research. But starting from 2004, and then especially from 2007, when, the, when there was the onset of the financial crisis, a lot of other financial networks, in this case event, event networks, networks which are built uh, and observed due to the fact that there are, uh, there are direct interconnection between, uh, between uh, uh, economic agents <coughs> have, been, uh, have been analyzed. 
One of the first was the international trade, but starting from, this is an economic network, but financial networks started to be investigated from 2004 to, uh, and then from, uh, uh, starting from 2007. Uh, the, two, uh, the two approaches are nowadays used uh, in, the, in the broad topic of the systemic risk because uh, both uh, the aspect of the event uh, networks and the aspect of the proximity network are relevant uh, for uh, the estimation of the systemic risk. An area that I, I think will, will grow in interest in the future, in my opinion, is the one of the network and markets which means that the fact that, uh, uh, I mean, not all markets are e equivalent or the same. So in some markets you have, uh, you have uh, some uh, preferential path or some constraint related to the interaction. And, uh, and then it is important to see whether these constraints are explicit constraints or implicit constraints. And, uh, uh, and, and this can be can, can be uh, obtained this information by, by evaluating if a market is networked or not. The other aspect in which Econophysical has contributed is, has been, uh, has been in, in, uh, in proposing data mining uh, uh, procedures which are not conventional and which are based, in, uh, uh, which are based on, uh, on concept to originating from physics and, and providing uh, a, a, an interesting contribution in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, when, uh, when data mining is needed. So, how much time do I have? Um, uh, be, 10, 12, 12 minutes, let's say. 12 minutes. So, uh, so then I have to decide what to skip. Mm -hmm. oh. Can take because I mean, this is these are classic uh, things concerning. So that, that's probably um, today we have seen uh, some talks concerning the complexity of the stochastic profile that we observe in the dynamics of uh, of, of the price and then of the return of some financial assets. I think uh, we all know this, the uh, the fact that uh, we have standardized facts like the leptoportosis of the return uh, the behavior of, of some indirect variable like the volatility and uh, and these are, are raised <coughs> some let's say discussion concerning the efficient market hypothesis that has been discussed uh, a few times today and these, these are very I mean especially the first one this is a very popular book over one million copies sold concerning the random walk down to Wall Street random walk uh, consistent with the efficient market hypothesis, but uh, you also have a, a non-random walk down Wall Street. What is the meaning of that? So the point is that, uh, uh, I mean, especially the financial market is an institution, which is, uh, which is in a sense, uh, we can see this uh, uh, institution as doing many things. One thing is just to uh, give uh, investment opportunity or, or, or given the possibility to, to, uh, 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 find, uh, to, to find money for the, for, the, for, the, for the companies. But it is also an institution which is uh, aggregating information. So, so in a sense, it's a huge, it's a huge uh, uh, social institution providing an, as an outcome uh, the price, the, the correct or just uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, the instantaneous price of, uh, of, of the financial assets. So this implies that uh, the profile of the, of the, uh, of the random process is it's, it's not trivial at all. It's very complex. <coughs> and, uh, and indeed, uh, you have, uh, for example, the long memory of the volatility, you have the leptocortosis, uh, and, uh, and you have uh, uh, some behavior which are typical also in, in, some, uh, in some physical model like the multifractor. And, uh, and multifractor started to be proposed st in starting in 1997 because from, from the work of Mondebrot and co-workers. And in this uh, in this area, also 
Marcel and Tiziana have contributed, have contributed a lot. And uh, uh, another aspect, so from this point of view, the complexity of the, uh, of the institution is reflected in a, in a sophisticated uh, stochastic process. And these are sophisticated univariate stochastic process. We can also ask ourselves uh, what's happening concerning uh, the multivariate aspect of, uh, of the market. And when we do that, uh, the, what we see is that uh, we observe uh, cross-correlation. And the way this cross-correlation are present in the market uh, is, is, is again uh, non-trivial. And I mean, this is just a, a color code representation of a correlation matrix of 100 stocks when the stocks are in alphabetical order. And here, when the stocks are with an order obtained from a hierarchical clustering, you see that uh, I mean there is some information which is present. So the point is that uh, I mean uh, this info can can we rely on this information? Is this information reliable? And at which level can we rely to th uh, to this information? If we do a statistical test concerning uh, the reliability of the of the Pearson correlation coefficient, which is this measure here, we see that from a statistical point of view, it is reliable. So in a sense, we should, from an, uh, we should use uh, all this information. But if we do that, uh, we see that this type of information is not so robust. So where, I mean, uh, what is the reason for that? I mean, uh, so in a sense, uh, the estimation should be correct from a statistical point of view, but on the other end, it is not reliable. So to answer to this paradox, we, in a sense, we, I mean, econophysics contributed uh, by, by, by considering uh, some result from random matrix theory. So random matrix theory was uh, originally introduced in, in, uh, in uh, nuclear physics from Wigner, and Wigner discovered what is called the semicircle law. So if you, if you just imagine a matrix which is a symmetric matrix, whose entries are the Hossian random number, and you, and you build up this matrix, and you analyze what is called the spectral density of that, so you, know, you diagonalize the matrix and consider the eigenvalues, the, the density function of the eigenvalues is described by a semicircle law. So this is a, and uh, I mean, this result is valid when uh, n tends to the infinity, but the convergence is so fast that when n is a, a reasonable number, not too large number, in this case 1,000, you see that the convergence is almost perfect. And uh, can this type of uh, results in physics be also used to, to answer the paradox, the previous paradox concerning the fact that you, we have, a, we have a, a value of the correlation coefficient which are statistically reliable from, from an estimation point of view, but on the other end, uh, we know that, uh, I mean, if we use this type of information, for example, in, uh, in portfolio optimization, then the realized uh, the risk of the portfolio sometimes is not uh, as it is uh, uh, predicted by by the typical theory that uh, are, or the, let's say, the, the widely used theory in finance, like the Markowitz theory. And the, the answer is yes, I mean, we can, we, we can have a very good indication of what's happening. And this very good indication is uh, uh, obtained by, by using the result that we, uh, what we have when we assume that we have, in this case, uh, the Hussian random variables and we estimate a correlation matrix. If we do that, again, there is something analogous of what I was showing before concerning the semicircle law, and the analogous is this uh, distribution here, which is called the Marchenko-Pasteur distribution, which was discovered by mathematician in 67, and it was uh, then used uh, later by econophysicists. And uh, the point is that, uh, I mean, uh, even if, I mean, when you have, uh, when you estimate with uh, n rec with t records, a, a correlation matrix of n element, 
you have a, <coughs> you you have a, that in the case of the in the case of the uh, in the case of random Gauss uh, variable, you have an uncertainty in the in the eigenvalues, and then you have a specific profile of uh, of uh, uh, of the eigenvalues, and and that can we compare this specific profile that again converge quite rapidly in terms of t and n when uh, t and n tend to infinity and uh, uh, can we use this type of information to to discriminate between what between information which is quite clear in the correlation matrix and information which is very hard to detect in the correlation matrix due to the fact that it would be indistinguishable from noise and uh, I mean, this can be done. I mean, there are, by changing the value of n, uh, n and t, the profile it changes. So when we set this value, we know what, uh, what are the limits of this uncertainty. And when we look at what's happening uh, in, in, uh, in for real portfolio, I mean, what uh, what you find, and this was found from, from by the group of Jean Philippe Bouchot with Mark Potters and the group of Gene Stanley in 1999. What you see is that typically you have a very large deviation, and this is just due to the fact that you have a, a common behavior of the different return. You have, a, you have a several others uh, eigenvalues which are quite far from, uh, the, uh, from what you would expect uh, for a random null hypothesis, but you have also a bulk of the distribution which is not so different from the from the random uh, bulk, which means that uh, for the information which is present in this region here, this information is really hard to extract. And, uh, but, uh, but this, on the other hand, means also that uh, there is other information. And then, uh, and then uh, this fact that, I mean, we have a stochastic process. This stochastic process has a very uh, uh, peculiar behavior with respect to the to the uh, autocorrelation of the re, uh, of the return of, 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 of a given financial asset due to the requirement of the absence of arbitrage opportunity. But in spite of that, so it is very close to a random walk, random walk in the sense of a Markovian walk, or what should be called a Markovian walk. So it's a martingale. So we have the, uh, we were told, uh, you know in one of the talks today. So it's something uh, for what the expected value is uh, nothing else than the past value, essentially. But uh, in spite for that, in, in this time series, you have a lot of information which is, which, is, uh, 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 which is associated to the time series. We, we see that uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the fact that uh, we have uh, these uh, eigenvalues here, and we see that uh, also in this profile here of the by eye, because our our eyes are are, are very good in uh, in pattern recognition. And this and you have I mean this you clearly see a pattern here when you when you reconstruct the correlation matrix with an order which makes sense. So these have been. Uh, associated with the attempts to filter this type of information. And one way is uh, by using random matrix theory, but another way is just by extracting uh, what we have called the similarity-based networks. And, uh, and uh, this, this is a very synthetic way to, to, to see the, the strongest interaction that you can see in, in, uh, in, the, in the dynamics of the return of some financial assets. One of the uh, uh, simplest and more effective way to, to extract this information is by using what is called the minimum spanning tree in these networks. Another approach has been to use uh, the, what we have called the planar maximal filter graph. This is a, this is a figure that was done by Tiziana many years ago now, and, uh, and it is a planar graph. And, uh, and this is uh, just uh, showing that, uh, I mean, the view 
that uh, the financial market is an institution uh, aggregating information <coughs> is a correct view and, uh, and, and, and indeed it is a very interesting uh, uh, system in which <coughs> you have uh, simultaneously information and noise which are present and which are playing the same game so sometimes noise uh, is information and sometimes information becomes noise and then it is very hard to to discriminate between these two things and uh, and uh, econophysics have contributed in trying to to to, to make this uh, um, uh, this type of efforts in having uh, instrument to separate uh, the information from uh, something which is hard to distinguish from the information and i think i have to stop here well uh if it is okay for you. But yes, no, it is. Yeah. <coughs> well, then, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> yes. I think it's always nice to, to give, uh, you know, like uh, 10 minutes for, for questions or comments or, you know, just remarks. And don't be shy. I mean, then for sure there is no stupid question, so you can, you can ask what you want. Oh, I have a question. You were talking about uh, the foundation, the foundations, or maybe founders of econophysics. And many people, uh, after hearing what econophysics is, uh, say that okay, this is just applied mathematics, or okay, this is just economics. So, could you comment on uh, what is special or unique in econophysical approach? Uh, the econophysics. I mean. As I see econophysics, essentially what, 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 what you try to do is just to contribute, uh, I mean, of course, I, I would go to the, to the conclusion. Uh, there were too many transparencies. So, so typically, uh, econophysics, in a sense, uh, has obtained some result. The point is that uh, what, what, what uh, the we are doing is an approach to the investigation which I think is complementary to the to the typical one of economist, financial mathematician, econometrician, and computer scientist. So it's uh, uh, I mean, we are contributing with the concept of uh, uh, which are proper from from physics. For example, I mean, I had no time to discuss. Uh, the uh, minority game. But in the case of the minority game, I mean, there are instruments which are typical instruments, a proper instrument of statistical <coughs> physics, right? the, the, the replica solution, the replica approach, and these type of, of things, which, which are unique for the solution of urgent based model. It is something that, uh, I mean, it is, is typical, is a background of a community. And, and only this type of approach can contribute uh, 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 for the solution as it did for that type of problem. Perhaps that type of problem cannot be considered uh, a typical problem for an economist, but indeed uh, the minority game was set as an economic problem. <coughs> because it came from the El Faro Bar problem, which was uh, just uh, 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 an economic problem uh, focused on uh, what are called in economics network externalities. So, uh, Econophysics, I mean, it, it's, it's just to contribute to economic and financial problems with a background which is typical and with results which are typical from physics. Uh, let, let's look at the example of the random matrix theory. It, it's, a, it's just a, 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 a null hypothesis. I mean, it is not just a statistical null hypothesis, but I mean, random matrix theory is a, is, is a problem which is a, is of interest in, in different areas of, uh, of, uh, 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 of physics, from nuclear physics to, 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 the, to, to other branches of the, of the physics, but, uh, but it is used here as a contribution to de a data mining problem, from a perspective which is unique, from, at least from what I see. All right, another question maybe? Yeah, okay. A small note, maybe there is something different in uh, physics and in maybe econophysics concerning what I would say the basic Hamilton 
the random matrix theory, yes, indeed, but we in physics use a admission matrix. And in economic physics, and we have seen that this afternoon, will be the matrix is not symmetric. And therefore, this leads to either complications or interesting things because eigenvalues can be complex. Okay. And therefore, we know also in physics that the second eigenvalue is of interest because it, it explains diffusion and things like that. And I think we in physics are not yet ready to move into non symmetric matrices which exist necessarily. We have seen that on the network this afternoon with the signs which are different if we go from A to B or from B to A, this and that. So there is something a little bit open, in my opinion, in the field, in general, mathematics, <laughs> physics, any content. There, there, is, a there is a lot of, I mean, not, 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 because, I mean, uh, one of the major limitations is that in physics, I mean, in, 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 not, most of the description is an equilibrium description. And, uh, and, uh, Complex system and complex system of uh, of uh, economics or financial nature are, are not in equilibrium. So, which is uh, another aspect of saying that. Uh, so, when you have an Hamiltonian, this means that you have something that it is constant. And in yeah. this type of and in, in this no, type of system, yeah. In, in this in this type of system, you you you, you have not. Uh, I mean, in, in most of the cases, I mean, we don't know what is. Uh, but it's constant, if, and if there is something which is, uh, uh, because these are open system mm -hmm. with a flow of something, so in a sense, uh, physics is contributing, but often it is contributing, in, I mean, the, the tools that we have are not so strong for this type of problems. But, but this, uh, I mean, being at this uh, uh, interface, this means that, uh, uh, there is also the other way around. So these type of problems could, 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 also, could also stimulate a physics approach to, towards some non-equilibrium modeling of, of, yeah. of systems. And I think that's a very important point, is the fact that there is a reciprocal link between economic physics and finance, let's say, because you know people say usually oh, economic physics, they get the economic physicists, they come with their models and that's all. Uh, well, actually, they are they are changing their, their their way of working because of the specific problem in finance. So th there is a there is a link, a reciprocal link between. It's not just physics that are influencing economics; it's also the methodology and the reality yeah. that are influencing physics. So that's very interesting, I think. Uh, I mean, very well explained in your book by uh, well, <laughs> that will be that will be for a bit later. But maybe we can we can. Uh, we can take a, maybe a, a last question, or if uh, somebody would like to ask another question, maybe. Yeah, sure, sure. Michel? Well, thank you. To put this question simplified, maybe what is the difference between mathematics and physics? So, <laughs> physics is nothing, to my opinion, than interpretation based on reality. So, mathematics, you have Newtonian law, second or the differential equation, but the interpretation of coefficients, mass and other quant dynamic quantities based on reality is, uh, is really progress, uh, intellectual progress. So in my opinion, this, this similar situation is econophysics. So we use some concept, but reinterpret it and compare with reality and again obtain some the feedback from reality, then again and again repeat and repeat. And uh, in this contact with reality, using mathematics and using concepts of physics, uh, we make progress, I think, and again return to, to reality. And so, so this is a, um, such a trajectory, but uh, what I would like to add also in this direction, what Rosario says that, for example, non-equilibrium dynamic uh, phase transitions, which are present perhaps in econophysics, could stimulate physics, because theory of dynamic, non-equilibrium, far from equilibrium uh, systems, does not exist. So then, just econophysics is ahead, ahead of this uh, part of knowledge. So, <laughs> ideology from econophysics and, and facts 
uh, real and reality and just perhaps could stimulate physicists to uh, develop uh, theory of uh, non-equilibrium uh, <laughs> dynamical theory of phase transitions. Only one of many examples. So, so okay. I'm quite sure of that. I mean, actually, I, for sure, some physicists will, will take this this path and I will develop. I mean, for sure, I'm quite sure about this. <coughs> what you mentioned now, I'm quite optimistic for the future. For the people will, I mean, that's that's the point. Yes. Well, if uh, there is no other question, we. I thank you very much. I thank you, Professor Rodin.